being here. Let's um, move into this. Um, we have two writers tonight who I think represent the expansion, whether it's good or bad, we'll find out, of the science fiction community into the uh, reaches of the internet. Uh, these guys are game designers, they're bloggers, they're people who have worked in the Silicon Valley and its outliers for quite a while, but they're also writers, and writers uh, with a certain um, heft to them. Uh, our first uh, reader tonight is, um, he claims that, he cla uh, Rena was talking about this being debut novel night, and it, that's a little bit of, um, a little bit of an exaggeration. This guy has published uh, through Quickstarter, not through a New York publisher or even a genre publisher, uh, a novella, which did fairly well. He's published several short stories. He, were you a literature major? No, no. No, of course not. And um, <laughs> but uh, he is. Uh, this is his first um, hardcover um, major novel. I think it's already received quite a bit of attention here in San Francisco. It's called Mister Penumbra's Twenty Four Hour Bookstore. And um, without further ado, let me introduce Robin Sloan. Thank you. Delight! What a great event and a great space, um, and it's just always a pleasure to be um, part of an event, sort of paired up with someone um, of whom you're a legitimate fan. I'm a I'm a huge fan of Austin Grossman's novels, so I'm excited to hear him read. I'll uh, I'll read quickly and get out of the way, and uh, maybe we can get to that. Um, I'm going to read a passage from the beginning of the book, and then there's also a sort of a nugget from later on. I'm going to read because it's uh, especially germane to the proceedings. It's very SF in SF. Um, but let's start at the beginning. Um, what's happening now is that our narrator, our protagonist, is unemployed in San Francisco. <laughs> it turned out that I could stay focused on job hunting if I got myself away from the internet. So I would print out a ream of help wanted ads, drop my phone in a drawer, and go for a walk. I'd crumple up the ads that required too much experience and deposit them in dented green trash cans along the way. So by the time I'd exhausted myself, and hopped on the bus back home, I'd have two or three promising prospectuses folded in my back pocket, ready for follow-up. Now this routine did lead me to a job, though not in the way I'd expected. San Francisco is a tiny square punctuated by steep hills and bounded on three sides by water, and as a result there are surprise vistas everywhere. You'll be walking along, and suddenly the ground will fall away, and you'll see straight down to the water, with the buildings lit up orange and pink along the way. San Francisco's architectural style didn't really make inroads anywhere else in the country, and even when you live here and you're used to it, it lends the vistas a strangeness. All the tall, narrow houses, the windows like eyes and teeth, the wedding cake filigree. And looming behind it all, if you're facing the right direction, you'll see the rusty ghost of the Golden Gate Bridge. I had followed one strange vista down a line of steep stair-step sidewalks, then walked along the water, taking the very long way home. I had followed the line of old piers, carefully skirting the raucous chowder of Fisherman's Wharf, and watched seafood restaurants fade into nautical engineering firms and then social media startups. Finally, when my stomach rumbled, signaling its readiness for lunch, I had turned back in toward the city. Whenever I walked the streets of San Francisco, I'd watch for help-wanted signs and windows, which is not something you really do, right? I should probably be more suspicious of those. Legitimate employers use Craigslist. <laughs> sure enough, the 24-hour bookstore did not have the look of a legitimate employer. The sign said, help wanted, late shift, specific requirements, good benefits. Now, I was, I was pretty sure 24-hour bookstore was a euphemism for something. It was on Broadway, in a euphemistic part of town. <laughs> My help wanted height had taken me far from home. The place next door was called Booties, and it had a sign with neon legs that crossed and uncrossed. I pushed the bookstore's glass door. It made a bell tinkle brightly up above, and I stepped slowly through. And I did not realize at that time what an important threshold I had just crossed. Inside, imagine the shape and volume of a normal bookstore turned up on its side. This place was absurdly narrow and dizzyingly tall, and the shelves went all the way up, three stories of books, maybe more. 
I craned my neck back, and the shells faded smoothly into the shadows in a way that suggested they might just go on forever. The shells were packed close together, and it felt like I was standing at the border of a forest. Not a friendly California forest, either, but an old Transylvanian forest, a forest full of wolves and witches and dagger-wielding bandits, all waiting just beyond Moonlight's reach. There were ladders that clung to the shells and rolled side to side. Usually those seemed charming, but here, stretching up into the gloom, they were ominous. They whispered rumors of accidents in the dark. So I stuck to the front half of the store, where bright midday light pressed in and presumably kept the wolves at bay. The wall around and above the door was glass, thick square panes set into a grid of black iron, and arched across them in tall golden letters it said, Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. Below that, set in the hollow of the arch, there was a symbol, two hands perfectly flat, rising out of an open book. So who is Mr. Penumbra? Hello there, a quiet voice called from the stacks. A figure emerged, a man, tall and skinny like one of the ladders, draped in a light gray button-down and a blue cardigan. He tottered as he walked, running a long hand along the shelves for support. When he came out of the shadows, I saw that his sweater matched his eyes, which were also blue, riding low in nests of wrinkles. He was very old. He nodded at me and gave a weak wave. What do you seek in these shelves? That was a good line, and for some reason it made me feel comfortable. I asked, Am I speaking to Mr. Penumbra? I am Penumbra, he nodded, and I am the custodian of this place. I didn't quite realize I was going to say it until I did. I'm looking for a job. <laughs> Penumbra blinked once, then nodded and tottered over to the desk set beside the front door. It was a massive block of dark world wood, a solid fortress at the forest's edge. You could probably defend it for days in the event of a siege from the shelves. <laughs> Employment. Penumbra nodded again. He slid up onto the chair behind the desk and regarded me across its bulk. Have you ever worked at a bookstore before? Well, when I was in school, I waited tables at a seafood restaurant, and the owner published his own cookbook. <laughs> that probably doesn't count. No, it does not. But no matter, a number said. Prior experience in the book trade is of little use to you here. Wait, maybe this place really was all erotica. I glanced down and around, but glimpsed no bodices, ripped or otherwise. In fact, just next to me, there was a stack of dusty dashel hammocks on a low table. That was a good sign. <laughs> Tell me, Penumbra said, about a book you love. I knew my answer immediately. No competition. I told him, Mr. Penumbra, it's not one book, but a series. It's not the best writing, and it's probably too long, and the ending is terrible, but I've read it three times, and I met my best friend because we were both obsessed with it back in sixth grade. I took a breath. I love the Dragon Song Chronicles. Penumbra cocked an eyebrow, then smiled. That's good. Very good, he said, and his smile grew, showing jostling white teeth. Then he squinted at me, and his gaze went up and down. But can you climb a ladder? And that is how I find myself on this ladder, up on the third floor, minus the floor, of mm -hmm. Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. The book I've been sent up to retrieve is called Al Asmari, and it's about 150% of one arm length to my left. Obviously, I need to return to the floor and scoot the ladder over. But down below, Penumbra is shouting, Lean, my boy! Lean! <laughs> and wow, do I ever want this job. <laughs> so that's how it starts. I'm just going to read a really tiny section, um, because this is the right audience for it. This is from much later. Spoiler alert, he gets the job. <laughs> um, and he works the night shift, uh, and he's very bored all the time. <clears throat> so how does he entertain himself? So I switch to my MacBook and make my rounds. News sites, blogs, tweets. I scroll back to find the conversations that happened without me during the day. When every single piece of media you consume is time-shifted, does that mean it's actually you that's time-shifted? Finally, I click over to my new favorite, Grumble. Grumble is a person, probably a human male, a secretive programmer <clears throat> who operates at the intersection of literature and code, part Hacker News, part Paris Review. My roommate Matt emailed me a link after he visited the store, guessing that Grumble's work might resonate here. He was correct. 
Grumble manages a bustling pirate library. He writes complicated code to break the DRM on ebooks. He builds complicated machines to copy the words out of real books. If he worked for Amazon, he'd probably be rich. But instead, he cracked the supposedly uncrackable Harry Potter series and posted all seven ebooks on his site free to download with a few changes. Now, if you want to read Potter without paying, you suffer fleeting references to a young, a young wizard named Grumble Grits, who studies at Hogwarts <laughs> alongside Harry. <laughs> it's not so bad. Grumble Grits gets a few good lines. But it's Grumble's newest project that has me mesmerized. It's a map of the locations of every science fiction story published in the 20th century. He's plucked them all out with code and plotted them in 3D space. So year by year, you see humankind's collective imagination reaching farther to the moon to Mars, Ju Jupiter, Pluto, to Alpha Centauri, and beyond. You can zoom and rotate the whole universe, and you can also jump into a little polygonal spaceship and cruise around yourself in the cockpit. You can rendezvous with Rama or find the Foundation Worlds.